Okay, I'm now going to audition some of the new genotypes that uh, we've just created. There may not be time to do them all because I notice our video is getting longer already. Um, just so you know, this is also where I'm going off the script, so uh, things are going to be more spontaneous, a little less edited, and somewhat hallucinogenic since I have a delay in hearing my own voice. So that, that makes it a little weird for me. But the sounds will be weirder. So what I'll do is click in the population window and holding down the control key while simultaneously holding a mouse and a microphone, I will slide up here and begin auditioning from the second item in the population. And uh, we don't hear anything from that guy. And I'm going to move through these fairly quickly using the uh, left and right arrow keys to navigate and the up and down arrow keys to set fitness. Here we go. No. Okay, but not remarkable. A little bit nicer and deeper. I'll try the parameters on that. Oh yeah, that's kind of a keeper. All right, we'll give that guy a two. In hopes that we find even more. No. No, that wasn't very wobble basey. Use that. Here's a good one. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to take that away. It's not that much more interesting than its parent. Hmm. No, just a bubble or a burp. So you can see the variety of children that come from a single parent can be rather spread out, even with very little uh, mutation set in there. Kind of like that nice deep sound. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that one for a little fitness. I'm going to give that one another two. Common mutation. Okay, we'll give that one a three. That one has a couple of forms of interest to it. Nope. because it's like a wobble base necessarily, but there's some definite Doctor Who potential. All right, give that one another two. Hmm. Nope. So you can see I get a little jaded about some of these. Nothing new. Oh, I kind of like that. There's a little bit of interest to this one. Um, it's not quite what I'm after, so I'll just give it a one. A lesser fitness than the rest I've heard. Hmm. I'm going to give that one just a care one for character. Hmm. Nope, not enough going on there. Same old. That one's cute. Another one.
too much of that. Okay, this one is interesting. I'm going to give this a uh, five. That has a little bit of a new element to it that I'd like to hear more of in future populations. Something at the end. Give that a, 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 a one. All right. There you have it. Now back to the script. Uh, well, what I could do first is I'll stop the music and then back to the script. As you can see, the green stained genotypes have been given some fitness. So let's kill the ones we don't want. Just so you know, you don't actually have to click the kill button, as all the unfit genotypes would be deleted in the next breeding cycle to make room for the new offspring automatically. As a bit of eye candy, I'll also open the patch editor for the population's mod synth panel so you can see all of the different patches being tried by the evolution engine in real time. And then I'll breed the next generation. If you were watching carefully, you might have noticed some repeating patterns in all of the patches that flashed past during that breeding cycle. These are like repeating phenotypic traits that you would expect to see in biological offspring. I'm not going to audition all of these genotypes in this video, maybe just the first few. Instead, what I'll focus on now is how bred or evolved patches may be immediately modified and saved as bank patches even during the auditioning process. You'll notice that I've already published quite a few evolved patches with the Trilobite installer, and many more yet on the Darwin Arts website. Generally, this practice of editing patches during audition mode is how I do it. I am assuming that you've already watched tutorial number two on patch editing, so I won't go into any detail at all describing the edits as I make them. Let's go. I'll audition the patches until I can find one worth listening to for a few moments. probably noticed during the breeding cycle that all evolved patches show this characteristic shape. The output module on the far left, a clump of linked modules in the middle, and then a tall wall of modules over here on the right side. Let me explain this. The evolved patches are auto-arranged by the editor so that this wall of modules and everything to the right of it make no feed-forward contribution to the output signal. One biological analogy might be the terminating alleles, which all of us have as part of our genetic code, but a better analogy might be latent or suppressed genes. An unexpressed genetic attribute in a parent might be strongly expressed in an offspring, or even emerge again generations later. That's all fine, but I usually delete all of the unused modules if I really like the sound, which, as you can hear now, doesn't change the sound at all. Another post-breeding improvement I like to make to evolved patches is to eliminate any mapped parameters which don't actually do anything interesting to the sound. To do this, I go through them one by one and move them around to hear what they do, like this. Okay, I can't hear this one doing anything at all which isn't really remarkable for an evolved patch. No big deal. I'll just remove the parameter map from the patch by right-clicking on it in the Mod Synth panel and selecting the Remove All Mappings option. And as you can see in both the Synth panel and the Patch Editor, that parameter mapping disappears. Now let's do the same thing for the rest of the mapped parameters. Yeah. 
Once I've cleared out useless parameters, I like to consolidate all of the remaining ones into a contiguous set, which is done from the Mod Synth panel by right-clicking on any of the enabled parameter sliders and selecting the Consolidate Mapped Parameters option. If I'm going to publish this evolved patch, I need to customize it with some descriptive metadata. Editing metadata was covered in tutorial number two, so I'll just do this quickly with no commentary. Lastly, I save the patch I've just modified by dragging it from the mod synth panel into a patch bank, like this. Cautionary note. Immediately saving modifications to an evolved patch before auditioning others in the population is vital in order to retain the changes just made. To understand why, consider that what we just edited was a patch translation of the genotype, not the genotype itself. Let me demonstrate. If I use the right arrow key to hop to the next genotype, and then hop back, note that all the changes I just made are no longer there, whereas if I drag the saved patch from the bank where I saved it back into the mod synth panel area, all of my changes are intact. If I wanted to, I could go on finding promising patches in this generation and giving them fitness to breed the next generation. But I'm afraid our time is up. Thank you so much for sitting through this third and probably final tutorial for Trilobite 093. I'm pretty sure we won't be releasing any more tutorials for this version, but that is not entirely for me to say. If you have any questions about breeding patches using our software, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below, or better yet, in the appropriate forum at darwinarts.com, linked in the descriptive text. All the best to all of you, and keep making those strange sounds. Why?